In this video, we're going to talk about families of sets, in particular unions and intersections of families of sets, and look at a couple of examples. So let's let uh, SI for each I in some index set, capital I, be a family of sets. So again, just to clarify, uh, capital I is called the index set, and it just sort of keeps track of or enumerates the sets S sub I. So I could be finite, it could just be their sets S1 and S2, or it could be infinite. I could be all of the natural numbers or all the real numbers, as we'll see in our examples later. So regardless, if you have a family of sets S sub I, the union of the family consists of all elements X, such that X is in some SI. So in order to be in the union, you have to be in at least one of the S sub I's, okay? So to be in the union, to, for x to be in the union, there must exist some element i in the index set capital I such that x is an element of the set S sub i. All right. In contrast, there's the, u, there's the intersection. So to be in the intersection of a family of sets, you have to be in every single one of the sets. So it consists of all x such that for all i in the index set i, x is an element of the set S sub i. Right? So to be in the intersection, you have to be in all the sets. To be in the union, you have to be in at least one of the sets. So let's look at an example. Let's find the union of these sets E sub x. Now, the sets E sub x, there is one E sub x for every real number x. And what we do to form the set E sub x is we take the set x or the element x together with the number 7. right? So for each real number x, e sub x consists of x and the number 7. So we claim that the union of the e sub x's is the set of all real numbers. To show this, we have to show that the union of the e sub x's is a subset of the set of all real numbers. And we have to show that the real numbers are a subset of the set of all, of the union of all the e x's. Right? So to show us two sets are equal, we have to show that um, the subset relation holds uh, in both directions there. So first we'll show that the union of all the EXs is a subset of the real numbers. So let's suppose that Y is in the union of the EXs. That of course means that Y has to be in at least one of the EXs. So let's say it's in E sub X. Right? To be in the union, there must exist a real number. Uh, x so that x so that y is in e sub x and so we're just stating that here. Now what is e sub x? Well e sub x is just the set consisting of x and 7 so y is an element of the set consisting of x and 7 that means that y is equal to x or y is equal to 7 and in either case we know y is a real number alright so we know x is a real number and we know that number 7 is a real number so regardless of which one y happens to be equal to, y is in fact a real number. All right, so uh, we just proved that if some element y is in the union, then it's in the real numbers, and that means that the union of the e sub x's is a subset of the real numbers. So now let's prove the other relation, the other direction. So let's suppose that the real we want to prove that the real numbers is a subset of the union. So let's assume that y is an element of the real numbers, right? And so we have to show that y is in one of the e sub x's. And we can show that by just building one of the e sub x's that we know y is in. And that's easy to do. We can just take the set consisting of y and the number 7. Then we know that y is an element of that set. Um, that set is one of the e sub x's. And so that means that y is an element of the union of the e sub x's. So we've proven that if y is a real number, then it's an element of one of the e sub x's, and therefore in the union of the e sub x's. So we've proven that the real numbers is a subset of the union of the e sub x's. So we've shown both that the union of the e sub x's is a subset of the real numbers, and that the real numbers are a subset of the union of the e sub x's. Both of those are true, and therefore it follows that the union of the e sub x's is equal to uh, the set of all real numbers.
Now let's look at the intersection of these e sub x's. So again, we're defining uh, for each x in R the set e sub x to be the set that contains x and the number 7. And we claim that if we were to take the intersection of all those e sub x's, we would wind up with just the set containing 7. So to show this, we have to show that the set containing 7 is a subset of the intersection of the e sub x's, and we have to show that the intersection of the e sub x's is a subset of the set containing 7. First we'll show that the set containing 7 is a subset of the intersection of the e sub x's. So assume y is an element of the set containing 7. All right. Well, obviously that means that y has to be equal to 7. That's the only thing that's an element of the set containing 7. So that means that for all x in R, y is in e sub x because x is equal to 7. Therefore, y is in the intersection of all the e sub x's. So we prove that if y is an element of the set containing 7, then y is an element of the intersection of the e sub x's. So it follows that the set containing 7 is a subset of the intersection of all the e sub x's. So now we need to show that the intersection of all the e sub x's is a subset of the set containing 7. As usual, this involves proving that if y is an element of the intersection, then y is an element of the set containing 7. But we're going to take a slightly different track here. We're going to prove that by proving the contrapositive. That if y is not an element of the set containing 7, then y can't be an element of the intersection of the e sub x's. All right. We know that contrapositive of a statement is logically equivalent to the original statement. So if we want to prove something, we know that a proof of the contrapositive will suffice. So let's get started proving the contrapositive by supposing that y is not an element of the set containing 7. Well, that simply means that y is not equal to the number 7. All right. And so to prove that y is not an element of the intersection of the e sub x's, what we need to do is we need to produce one of the sets e sub x that we know y is not in. All right. So if you're in the intersection, that means you're in all of the e sub x's. If you're not in the intersection, it means that there is some e sub x that you're not in. And if we could build such an e sub x, that would prove that y is not an element of the intersection. It's not hard to build such an e sub x. All right. We know y is not equal to 7. And if we take z to be y plus 1 and look at the set e sub z, well, ask the question, could y possibly be in the set e sub z? Well, no, because y is not equal to z, all right? Because if, because then y would be equal to y plus 1, which we know it can't happen. And we know y is not equal to 7, so y is neither of those two numbers. It's, it's not z and it's not 7, so y is not in e sub z, all right? Since y is not in e sub z, that means there exists one of the e sub x's that y is not an element of. And it follows then that y is not an element of the intersection of the e sub x's, because it's not an element of all of them. So we've proven if y is not an element of the set containing 7, then y is not an element of the intersection. It follows that if y is an element of the intersection, then it's an element of the set containing 7. That is, that the intersection of the e sub x's is a subset of the set containing 7. So we've proved both subset relations hold, and therefore it follows that the intersection of the e sub x's is equal to the set containing 7. Let's look at one more example. So here, we want to prove that if we were to take the intervals of the form negative 1 over n to 1 over n, for every natural number n, and take the intersection of all those intervals, we would be left with just the set containing 0. All right, so to visualize that, um, these intervals are of the form. The first one is negative 1 to 1. The second one is negative 1 half to 1 half. The third one is negative 1 third to 1 third. The fourth one is negative 1 fourth to 1 fourth, and so on. So you can see as n gets larger, these intervals are getting smaller. What you, what you want to do is prove that the only thing that's common to all of these intervals is 0. All right, so we want to prove that the intersection of all these intervals 
for every natural number n is equal to the set containing 0. So to prove that, as usual, we have to show that the set containing 0 is a subset of the intersection, and we have to show that the intersection is a subset of the set containing 0. So first we'll prove that the set containing 0 is a subset of the intersection. Let's let x be an element of the set containing 0. That, of course, means that x is equal to 0. And by definition of the interval, all right, so for each natural number n, the interval from negative 1 over n to 1 over n is just all real numbers that are strictly between negative 1 over n and 1 over n. And we know 0 is one of those for any natural number n. So it follows that 0 is in every interval of the form negative 1 over n to 1 over n. And therefore, 0 is an element of the intersection of all those intervals. Right? So we've shown that if uh, x is an element of the set containing 0, then x is an element of the intersection of those intervals. And it follows that the set containing 0 is a subset of the intersection of all those intervals. All right? So that proves one direction. All right, now we want to prove that the intersection of the intervals is a subset of the set containing 0. All right? So to prove this, we have to show that if x is an element of the intersection, then x is an element of the set containing 0. And of course, if x is an element of the set containing 0, we know x is just equal to 0. So really, this is the same as proving that if x is an element of the intersection, then x is equal to 0. And we're going to take the track that we took in the proof of the last intersection. We're going to prove this by proving the contrapositive. We're going to prove that if x is not equal to 0, then it can't be in the intersection. All right? So that's what we're going to prove. So let's suppose x is not equal to 0. Now if x is not equal to 0, we want to prove that x is not in the intersection. We have to produce a natural number and show that for that natural number, x is not an element of the interval from negative 1 over n to 1 over n. All right. Now, if that's true, then either x is greater than 1 over n or x is less than negative 1 over n. Okay, in other words, the absolute value of x is greater than 1 over n. All right. Now, since x is not equal to 0, we know that the absolute value of x is greater than 0. All right. And we want to find a natural number n so that the absolute value of x is greater than 1 over n. And we can do this uh, by using the Archimedean principle. Okay. So doing a little scratch work off to the side, um, would we'll show you how to use the Archimedean principle here. We'll just present the results of that. Okay, since x is absolute value of x is greater than zero, one over the absolute value of x is a real number. Okay, and in particular, it's not equal to one over zero, so we know it's a real number, one over absolute value of x. By the Archimedean principle, we can find some natural number, which we'll call n sub x, so that one over the absolute value of x is less than n sub x. And that, of course, means that x is greater than 1 over n sub x. All right, so the absolute value of x is greater than 1 over n sub x. And that means that x is not an element of the interval from negative 1 over n sub x to 1 over n sub x. Therefore, x is not in the intersection. So if we found, by the Archimedean principle, we found um, an interval of the right form that x is not a member of. That means that x is not a member of all such intervals, so it's not a member of the intersection of all such intervals. And so we've proven that if x is not an element of the set containing 0, then x is not an element of the intersection. So if x is, is an element of the intersection, then x is an element of the set containing 0. That is, the intersection of the intervals is a subset of the set containing 0. So we proved that both 0 is a subset, set containing 0 is a subset of the intersection, and the intersection is a subset of the set containing 0. All right? It follows that the intersection of all these intervals is equal to the set containing 0. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for listening.